changes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, something jarring happened to me today, okay? I'm a bit jarred. <laughs> Basically, um, I went to Target this morning and I was confronted with fall scents, okay? I was confronted with the fall candles. I was confronted with the pumpkin bourbon of it all, which is my favorite Target scent. I had a bit of a panic, I'm not gonna lie, because what do you mean? What do you mean summer's almost over? That is just not right. That's just not right. I feel as though I did not capitalize on the summer the way I should have, and I'm having a bit of regret about that at this present moment. So obviously, as I know you know from the title and thumbnail of this video, we're remedying that, okay? We're remedying that today, this week, however long it takes for me to film this video, and we are going to read some summer books together. We're gonna read some summer books, we're gonna do some summer activities, we're gonna eat some summer foods before they go out of season, and we're just gonna have a good time, okay? We're gonna have a good time. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> I have a couple books in mind. Obviously, I want to get the summer summer books off of my physical TBR because I'm not always a seasonal reader, but I really feel like summer books specifically hit the best in the summer. So I have two books physically that are summer vibes that I want to read for this video. And then I have my eye on two more summer reads that I don't physically own, but um, I have a Barnes & Noble gift card, okay? I fear I'm going to be using it. So I'm currently reading actually Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, which is a summer romance. This one's definitely more emotional than it is rom-com. This is my second ever Abby Jimenez book. I read Yours Truly, which is the interconnected standalone that comes before this one. I haven't read the first one. I haven't read Part of Your World. And I've already gotten to parts in this that do involve characters from the first book. And I'm kind of disappointed in myself because I wish that I knew more about them or like understood. They're not integral to this story, but it would have made it more would have made it more, you know? So I do recommend you read Part of Your World before reading Just for the Summer. With that being said, I am really enjoying this. Abby Jimenez's writing is just so fast paced. It's so bingeable. The characters are always very sweet. Like the men are very, very like, if he wanted to, he would. And Justin in this book, our love interest, he is the epitome of if he wanted to, he would. Some might argue maybe to a bit of an extreme extent, but as an acts of service girly, I Hey, I love this for Emma. If you've never heard of Just for the Summer, it's basically about Justin and Emma who meet on Reddit actually, because Justin posts an Am I the Asshole Reddit thread basically detailing how every girl that he ever dates after they break up goes on to meet her soulmate. And Emma DMs him because she actually believes herself to have the same curse. So they basically strike up a deal to go on four dates, kiss once, and then break up in order to move on and find the loves of their life. Obviously that's not what happens. Obviously, obviously a romance ensues between the two of them instead. It's very cute. It's very sweet. This definitely deals with a lot of heavier emotional topics, I will say. Justin is actively going through trauma. Um, he's about to take custody of his younger siblings and become a single parent. And Emma has a lot of trauma from her childhood that she's kind of in denial about the fact that she has. So a lot of it is just them navigating the circumstances of their lives to find out if they are even capable of being together in the way that they want to be. So it's different than I thought it was going to be in that sense. And also I will say, as much as I'm enjoying myself, this is not my favorite favorite fictional couple I've ever read about. I feel like it was a bit insta-lovey. Justin is definitely obsessed with Emma, which again, love that for her, but I don't know that I'm like really feeling the chemistry come off the page beyond that. Yeah, I don't know. There's just certain aspects of this that maybe aren't my favorite thing in the whole world to have in a romance book, but again, I'm still having a really good time. I think also part of it is I was expecting it to be a lot more like summer vibes than it is. Obviously their arrangement is just for the summer. Like Emma's only in Minneapolis where Justin is for a brief amount of time and it's just for the summer but I don't know that's like her and her best friend live in a cabin on a lake that's kind of like the extent of what would make it summery I don't know I don't know I don't know I just think also I heard so many people give this glowing reviews and gave it five stars that I was hoping it would impact me that way but I'm definitely not quite there it's not a bad book by any stretch of the imagination like I'm thinking it's somewhere in the four star range and again I'm almost done so I'll have final complete thoughts for you very shortly but I don't know with all that being said wow I said a lot I wasn't even planning on saying that much but um I guess I had to because I was almost I'm almost done with it genuinely but all that being said, that's that's book one. And then book two, I think, is going to be The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand, which is actually one of her Nantucket series books. This is my book club's pick for the month of August, so I could wait until closer to when we're actually going to be meeting for book club to pick it up, but it's set on Nantucket. It's going to have strong summer vibes, I think, and so I want to get to it sooner rather than later. But this is a, I think, character-driven mystery. I'm pretty sure one of the characters is murdered very early on in the book. Like, it's like a wedding on a rye with this really rich family. And that's really all I know. The reason we picked this for my book club is because it's being turned into a movie TV show on Netflix. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you. And yeah, it just seems like really fun. I know I really like Ellen Hildebrand's writing. I've read 28 Summers by her and I really enjoyed her writing style. Not necessarily the story of that book, but I, I liked her writing and I liked the vibes of Nantucket. So I'm very excited for this one. This is kind of chunky. Okay, it's like 460. Also, this paperback. 
yeah. <laughs> okay, so for now, these are the two we're starting with. I'm literally almost done with this. I think I have like 30 pages left. So I think I'm gonna go sit on the roof, maybe pour myself a glass of wine, read a little bit of this, and then probably start this. And then when I have some time to talk to the camera, I will let you know my final thoughts and first impressions of this bad boy. So, okay, let's get started. <laughs> As an avoidant attachment style girly myself, love my girl Emma, so. Just recorded an entire clip in this very public space um like a whole 10 minutes of me talking and then i realized i just the lighting was terrible okay since i'm kind of losing daylight and i'm in broad view of a bunch of people around my age and just various people just walking in this park i'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet i have tried multiple times to figure out exactly how to explain my thoughts on this book and i am struggling i don't know what's wrong with me i cannot figure out how to explain how i felt about just for the summer i don't know i don't know i think in terms of how it resonated with me overall it kind of felt like Bodyguard by Catherine Center in terms of like, I liked the banter, but the humor is not exactly mine. So like a lot of like the funny, <laughs> charming moments weren't really working for me just because I think the humor felt a little bit millennial for me more so in this one than yours truly, which is interesting. I don't know, just like the humor between these two didn't 100% work for me. And then also the insta love of it all just wasn't working for me. If the nature of the romance had been a little bit different, then maybe it would have worked more for me. Overall, not like a super fave which i think is another thing like i think my expectations are really high clearly me having expectations is something i really need to work on book wise like i really think it's just so much better if i have no information about the book and i'm going in completely blind so anyways with that being said i think i'm gonna settle on 3.75 stars just because that is what i settled on for the bodyguard by Catherine center and like i said i feel very similar about this one so that's book number one <laughs> also sorry if the lighting is changing a lot because sun is about to be hitting me but that's okay wait did i even say that i came to the park to do this i came to the park to read <laughs> and i brought this little microphone so that i could record myself in public and it would feel more like i was recording a podcast and not a video because for some reason it's less embarrassing i'm honestly surprised i'm still doing this like i'm fully like in full view of some people oh no i fear the lighting's about to get really intense i moved <laughs> there's just there's too many people here there's too many people here okay i actually haven't read like basically any of the perfect couple I'm on page 15 so i figured since i can't give you any more information or even my thoughts on this so far i figured i'd just read you the back of the book well you'll at least know what i'm reading in the meantime so here we go they're the perfect couple about to have the perfect wedding until a shocking discovery reveals that nothing is ever as good as it seems Nantucket wedding season also known as summer sight of a bride racing down main street is as common as the sun setting on Madigan the Otis Winbury wedding promises to be an event to remember. The groom's wealthy parents have spared no expense to host a lavish ceremony at their oceanfront estate, but it's going to be memorable for all the wrong reasons. After tragedy strikes, a maid of honor is discovered dead in Nantucket Harbor just hours before the ceremony, and everyone in the wedding party is suddenly a suspect. As chief of police Ed Kapanesh interviews the bride, the groom, the groom's famous mystery novelist mother, and even a member of his own family, he discovers that every wedding is a minefield and no couple is perfect. So, unfortunately, I have not read any of the books in the Nantucket series that come before this one, so I won't be able to recognize her characters that are in here, but I actually think it's really cute that she does this. I have always been such a sucker for an interconnected standalone situation where old characters resurface, like OG Sarah Dessen books. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and read for a little bit, and then I think we're gonna go to Barnes & Noble because I have a book that I wanna buy. I have two options. I'm either gonna get Summer Fridays or Seven Days in June. That is the one that I'm really heavily leaning towards because I think that could be a five-star read for me. I just don't know that it's as Summer Vibes as Summer Fridays, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll take you to Barnes, and then we will figure out where we're going from there. Okay, talk to you in a little bit. <laughs>
to say. I'm on page 227. Maybe I have a suspicion of who did this. Not a clue. Just wanted to update you. <laughs> Hey, I came back home because I needed to pee and also I wanted to light my peach bellini candle, open my window. I have a little summer afternoon moment going on here. And I'm almost done. I'm in the home stretch. I have 100 pages left and I have a guess for the answer to who done it. I have two guesses, which I guess is not fair. So <laughs> I'll go with the one that I think it could be. I think <laughs> tried to <laughs> and <laughs> that's what I think. I don't know if I've said this, but the book is super interesting. It's like, it's all in third person and it's divided up into like different days and different times. And we're getting backstory on each of the characters and also like updates into like the interview process the day after the murder. And also there's just every once in a while, there's just like a general like Nantucket perspective that kind of just like gives you a couple scenes from various people on the island, like things that were happening on the island the day after the murder as well. And it's like from different characters in that chapter instead of it just being like one. Um, character because usually when it's like say it's like Greer who's the mom it'll say Greer and then it's third person while we're in that chapter but it's very clearly like her inner thoughts like her inner monologue her perspective on things etc so like when it's Nantucket we're jumping around from a few different characters so I think that's really fun I really like how Ellen Hildebrand is like building this world I also love how like east coast summer atmospheric it is so again I think I said this already but it did take me a minute to like get into the story but now clearly I'm in it since I'm almost done and I'm like, I'm racing to the end. Like I want to know the answer to who done it. So we'll see. We'll see how things play out. <laughs> Great, my brother now, and I think my guess was backwards. We'll let you know. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm on the last chapter, and I think I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Dang it. Damn, that was a really sad ending. Finished. Hey, <laughs> finished her. This took me, I don't even want to tell you guys how many days. It took me a lot of days. I'm going to be honest. I think, as you may or may not have seen in my previous reading vlog, I did pull myself out of a slump. However, there's a little bit, it's lingering a little bit, I think, because there were days when I looked at this book and I had time and I could not make myself read any of it. So I want to be fully transparent and say that and let you know that my ultimate rating of this book feels a bit unfair because I know that part of it was probably just due to the fact that I didn't want to be reading, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so clearly I didn't predict the ending. I kind of did, but not really. I'm not gonna give it to myself because I really, I did not see, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it, I didn't see it. I was sort of close, but not close enough to give myself credit for it, so I won't. <laughs> I love Ellen Hildebrand's writing. I'm very excited to continue to read more of her books, ideally next summer, because they are just so atmospheric, so Nantucket. Just, I love the world that she creates. I also love how nuanced the characters are and how we get multiple points of view. Actually, me saying that like it's overarching. I've only read two books by her. I liked in this one how we got multiple points of view. I will say two things. Actually, three things. I was never fully locked into the story, I think. I'm wondering if part of that is because I'm. this is my book club book. And so I was considering putting it to the side and picking another book for this video. But I know I have to read it at some point. So I was just like pushing myself, even though I wasn't exactly in the mood for this specific book. So that could be one thing. Thing number two is that I was a little bit bored at times. I think it took me like a hundred plus pages to really get invested in what was going on and I think that just came with becoming invested in the characters and caring about the characters specifically Celeste the bride I just struggled to like fully be in this so I wasn't completely entertained and the third thing is because like I said we were jumping around to different times like flashbacks and then like you know different times throughout the day while the police were investigating the murder like the day after it happened I was a little bit confused constantly like I was having to until I got in like the back 200 pages I kind of had a grasp on like the timeline of everything but I think partially probably also because I wasn't super locked in I was having to like double check what the dates meant I don't know I was just for some reason having trouble keeping track of that so that was another thing where at the end of the day what it boils down to I was not super locked into this and I wish I was but I wasn't I would still recommend it so that puts it solidly in the three star range minimum because again I love Ellen Hildebrand and I can so understand why people like adore this I think for me it was a case of wrong book wrong time as I've made clear <laughs> I think I would go somewhere between 3 and 3.5 I just don't think 
think it's gonna have staying power like I don't think it's gonna be a story that I ever come back to it's not like a mystery that like stands out as anything like crazy revolutionary it's just like I just have a feeling I'm not gonna think of this again so I think I would go three stars I just think wrong book wrong time unfortunately so yeah book number two <laughs> and then lastly who else is scared me me is scared because we have another situation where i have expectations unfortunately i do have expectations for this girl right here i read the prologue obsessed with the writing style immediately and i just have heard such glowing things about this that i'm telling myself it's going to be in the four star range which is already a dangerous expectation to have but it's even worse because deep down i'm, I'm predicting five stars so like i'm so sorry to seven days in june by t williams because i am basically setting this up for failure if it doesn't meet these weird expectations i have in my head just want to preface that so <laughs> yeah basically what i know about this this is a romance it's about two people that had seven days in june together way back when had like a passionate affair I haven't seen each other since but both writers and they've been writing each other into their works since then and then they re-meet and they are older and potentially rekindle i think i'm gonna go ahead and start this i'm hoping to get a good chunk of it done today and then maybe i can finish it tomorrow fingers crossed i have another pretty relaxed day that i think i'm gonna try and do more summer activities i didn't really take you guys along today but i went to a sandwich shop that i really love they have like a nice outdoor patio area so i was sitting there for a while and reading and then i drove to the park and right outside the park and it was just beautiful very atmospheric very summer so i'm hoping to do something like that tomorrow to finish out the summer of it all i'm starting to really feel the transition to fall unfortunately so i feel like this one is going to be a good transition book since it seems like it's going to lean more literary fiction i feel like it'll be a good bridge we'll see so with that being said i'm just going to go ahead and get started on this one and i will come back to you guys when i have things to say about her so wish me luck i'm so scared nothing scarier than a five star prediction <laughs> I lied to you and I did not start this last night. I mean, I got nine pages in, but that that's the extent of how far I read last night. So I just got back from grocery shopping. I'm going to meal prep a dense bean salad. I don't know if you guys have been seeing that all over your TikTok. It's been all over mine. So I'm gonna make one of those to take for lunches this week. And while I do that, I'm going to start the audiobook for this. I have every single summer candle in my apartment lit right now and as soon as the food stuff is done i honestly don't have any plans whatsoever this afternoon so i think i'm going to try and finish most of if not all of this because i would love for today to be the last day of the vlog also just feel like books that i binge all in one sitting usually sit so much higher on my rating scale and again i have high hopes for her so maybe giving her a binge would really work out in my favor who knows i don't know if i already said this or not but from the couple of pages that i've read of this i love the writing style so i'm very optimistic feeling good feeling excited so I will let you guys know when I have thoughts slash when I finished. <laughs> last night on page 246 and I'm almost done I think that means I have 80 pages left I'm like I really just feel like the depth of their connection comes through so clearly this is second chance done really really well this is second chance done really really well I'm eating it up I got a matcha I'm sitting in my car I'm gonna finish this okay <laughs> Guess what? I finished. Immediately, easily, five stars. I am obsessed with this book. I'm obsessed with this book. I don't remember specifically how much detail I gave about what it's about and what it explores, but basically it's about Ava and Shane were together for a week in June when they were, I believe, 17, when they were tortured teenagers going through incredibly traumatic experiences. They were both in a lot of pain and they found relief and connection in each other. And this book takes place when they're reconnecting 15 years later. They're both in very different places. They're very different people. 
Ava is a single mom and a published like fantasy erotica writer and Shane is sober and a published literary fiction author beloved very mysterious kind of has existed outside of the spotlight whereas like Ava has been living in like the black literary community in New York City and then their paths cross obviously and they reconnect and we follow them over the course of this week while also getting insight into what happened when they were 17 and how things ended and how we got here so loved it I have to say the world that Tia Williams created even though it's literally just the black literary community in New York is so incredibly vivid like I know it's a real life thing like it's not like she was world building something that didn't exist but it felt like I was immersed in it like it was so vivid and fun and funny and it felt like actively millennial but like on purpose not just because like the humor happened to be millennial or whatever it was literally because Shane and Ava are both 34 30s somewhere in their early 30s and so existing in that space and like being authors and Ava having a daughter that's online and all that kind of stuff like they exist in that space and I don't know it just really really worked for me I also love Ava's daughter she is so me coded in terms of like I was like my peak confident creative and also radicalized political activist because of my time spent on tumblr when I was 12 and 13 years old so love her to death love her and I don't know there were just so many moments in this that I was giddy and then also heartbroken and also just so impressed that they felt like real people like it was exploring their traumas and their mindsets and their thought patterns and all that kind of stuff in such a successful way in my opinion I just I loved it the fact that they spent 15 years writing about each other and then they confronted each other about it absolutely absolutely like yeah like they were each other's muses they were each other's muses they didn't speak for 15 years they found each other again okay this is peak second chance romance obsessed with her so love it so much perfect vibes great writing can't wait to read more from Tia Williams very excited about this five stars love her okay so with that being said just want to do a quick little recap because I need to end the vlog here so obviously first we read just for the summer by Abby Jimenez I think I'm gonna stick with 3.75 stars I think that feels right for me again I enjoyed it I like Abby Jimenez's writing she just doesn't sit at the top of my romance author slash romance book experience list I think so 3.75 stars for that one and then next we read the perfect couple by Ellen Hildebrand I don't don't remember what I said about this in terms of how I was gonna rate it but I've thought about it a little bit more and I think I'm gonna settle on three stars I like found this note in my notes app visiting like what my star ratings kind of mean I think three stars is fitting I don't think it's gonna have any staying power I would recommend it because it was an enjoyable read I just I already don't remember anything about it. like how am I gonna talk about this in book club I don't remember so if that tells you anything three stars for me personally and then obviously five stars for seven days in June I love a video where we find a five star. Truly unmatched. Just so good. That being said, I do think I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. I'm very, very excited for the transition to fall. Like I said, I did already buy a candle. Okay, so I'm ready. It's happening. Probably starting tomorrow, even though it's not even September yet. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully with some kind of cozy fall vibes. We'll see. Okay, bye. <laughs>